Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about strings and string functions. Now, this tutorial is going to be very code heavy because I'm going to show you a ton of string functions. And strings are just a series of characters between quotes, be they single quotes, double quotes, or triple quotes. So I'm going to say here, print, and type is going to tell me what type I am working with meaning data type and I can put double quotes inside of here I can put single quotes inside of here or triple quotes as I will show you right now so we can go like this and then I can also go don't one two three and three and each one of them is going to be labeled as a string as you can see right there and just to reinforce what type means if you haven't seen it before and you should watch the previous tutorials definitely to make sure that you know we can throw type inside of here with any different type of data and it's going to tell us what data type we are working with. There you can see we have an integer and there you see we have a float. Now each character is stored in a series of boxes labeled with index numbers. And the first index is going to be zero and you're going to be able to find out how many characters are in a string using length here as you're going to see. So I'm going to create sample string and I'll say this is a very important string. I can now come in and get the number of characters in that string just by going len for length and sample string. Run it, you can see there's 31 characters inside of it. And you're going to be able, like I said before, to get each of those characters individually by referencing the index number. So I could come in and I could say print sample string and zero and get the very first character inside of there which is T. I'm also going to be able to get the last character inside of there by throwing a negative one inside of it and you can see that that is G and you're also going to be able to get a block of characters using something called a slice and a slice is where you define what index values you want between brackets so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say print sample string again and let's say I want to start at the first index and I want to go up to but not include the fourth index. I can do that and just get the first word of this. You can also come in here and get everything starting at a specific index the whole way to the end by saying I want to start at the eighth index and then not putting anything in there that's going to default to the end of the string. Let's say you would like to get every other character inside of a string. You can do that as well. Let's go, let's call this every other sample string. And let's say we want to start from the beginning and we want to go to the end and we want to step each time two characters and we get this sort of gobbledy gush type of stuff every other da 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 we could also come in here and reverse a string so here we will say reverse and to do that you go sample string and you put two colons inside of here and then you go negative one and there's our string in reverse here's some other different things we can do let's go and get rid of all of this you're going to be able to concatenate or combine two different strings. So let's say we have green and eggs. You can do that just with the plus sign. You're going to be able to repeat strings. So let's say we wanted to say hello five different times. Just multiply times five. Hello, 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 hello. You're going to be able to convert an int into a string just as we saw before. So we can say number string is equal to string and the number four. And of course you're going to be able to cycle through each character with a for loop. How we do that is you go for character and character is going to get each of those individual characters inside of the string. They are going to be temporarily stored inside of this variable named character. And we'll have print print all of them out, which there are a lot of them, as you can see right there. You're also going to be able to cycle through characters in pairs. So to do this, we're going to say something like for i in range 0, 
and then the length of your sample string. What I'm doing here is just manipulating indexes. Minus one, and then I want to skip to have two at a time. I'll get rid of this parentheses that I accidentally got thrown in there. And then what I can do is go print sample string and the value of i plus sample string. This is just something goofy. And that'll be i plus 1. And if we run it, you're going to see you get every other value. See, this is a very important like that. Just and now what I'm going to do is talk about Unicodes so that you will be able to use Unicodes to solve a problem. So basically, I talked about Unicodes previously. Computers assign characters with a number known as a Unicode. And so, for example, A through Z are going to have the Unicode numbers of 65 through 90. And then you have lowercase values of A through Z and they are going to have the Unicode characters of 97 through 122. Now you're going to be able to get the Unicode using the ORD function. So let's say print, and we want to find out what A's Unicode character is. We just go ORD and throw in the letter A, and it will give us just that. And there you can see it's 65, just like I promised you up here. You're also going to be able to convert from Unicode so let's just copy this and show you how that's done. Here I'm going to put 65. And then over here I'm going to use the character function with 65. And you can see we get the letter A back. And I just wanted to mention one other thing here before I proceed. You are able, instead of saying something like value 1, I know I've covered this before. I just wanted to cover it again just to make sure you got it. So let's say we have value 1 plus value 1 and uh, uh, one. Okay. What you're going to be able to, to also do to get your exact same results is to go value one plus equal to one. And this also works if you are doing a subtraction, a multiplication, a division, and even a modulus. Okay. So that's just a shortcut for that. And you're also going to be able to do the same thing with strings. So string one plus equal to string two. Okay, so just so you are 100% understanding of how those shortcuts work. And now I'm going to present you with a pretty tough Python problem for you to solve. And like always, just remember it's not all that important that you get it right. It's just important that you work through it, uh, exercise the old brain, and that you understand my final result. Okay, so the way this problem is going to work is you are going to receive an uppercase string. Very important that it's uppercase. Uppercase like dog with no spaces in it. Okay? And what you're going to do is then hide its meaning by turning it into a string of Unicodes. Then what your program is going to do is translate those Unicodes back into their original message. Now, use the code that I've already shown you on this tutorial. This code is available underneath the video to try to solve this problem. You can pause your video to solve it. Otherwise, I'm going to provide the solution right now. So, the way this is going to work is I can get rid of all this. This part here is actually very important. I'll leave that on the screen because you would have had to use that information to solve it. What I'm going to do is go and ask the user to enter some input, input, and enter a string to hide in uppercase. All right, and then after we get that, what I want to do is I'm also going to have a secret string, which I'm going to present to the user. And then what I need to do is cycle through each character in the string. So I'm going to say for character in normal string. I then want to store each character code in a new string. So I'm going to say secret string plus equal to and then go and get that character code and then convert it back into a string. And then after I do that I can print out my secret message by saying secret string like that. 
All right, now what I need to do is come in here and do the opposite. So what I want to do is cycle through each character code two at a time by incrementing by two each time, just like I showed you in that neat little trick earlier. And because these are uppercase characters, we know that it's going to be 65 through 90. That's the reason why we're cycling through two at a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 4i in range 0, length of the secret string, minus 1. See how you're literally copying what I covered before. 2, meaning we're cycling through two numbers at a time. And what I want to do is get the first and second meaning the whole entire number, either 65 or 90. So that's going to be character code is equal to secret string i plus secret string. And this is going to be i plus 1. Now that I have my character code, I just need to convert the codes into characters and then add them to my new string. So I'll say normal string is going to be, uh, I'll go plus or equal to, convert it into a character from the character code that it was stored as and add it to that normal string like I said and now what I'm going to be able to do is print the original message which is going to be stored in normal string and if we go and run it enter a string to hide in uppercase and I can say dog it's going to convert it to just Unicode characters and then it is going to spit out the original message. And the reason I printed dog dog is because I didn't take normal string and basically empty it. So let's go and throw that in there to fix that embarrassing error. And run it again. And enter a string to see what the output's going to be. And I will do cat this time. And you'll see that it worked properly. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you got that right because I'm going to hit you with another problem right now. So well, now what I want you to do is make the above work with both uppercase and lowercase letters by changing just two lines of code. Now you're going to have to think a lot about this stuff up here, and this is a very challenging problem. I know, but I think you can do it. And again, just ignore spaces and give it a go. Otherwise, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve it right now. Now, if you look at these different values that you have here, and if we don't want to change our code that much, meaning we still want to cycle through two at a time, well, it's very easy to do so. The problem that you're going to have here is that this is three digits and the numbers that precede it are three digits. Well, you can basically eliminate them if you just subtract 23 from them, and that's going to give you 99. And then whenever you go to provide your results in your original message, just add those 23 back inside of it. So that's all we need to do here to solve this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our secret string part right here. Well, right inside of here, we're going to subtract 23. And then what we're going to do is add the 23 back inside whenever we convert back to our regular message. So we say, that's all I did. I subtracted 23 and added 23. We save it and run it. And now it's going to work for both uppercase as well as lowercase. So I can say something like C-A-T like that, and it's automatically gonna work. So there you go, guys. Some kind of challenging little problems there. Like I said, don't let it bother you if you didn't get them right. And that's all I'm going to cover about strings this time. In the next video, however, we'll cover even more with strings. And of course, I'm going to have many problems for you to solve. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below.